Hello everyone and welcome to Secrets of the Pizzaplex. In this video, we'll be looking at areas normally inaccessible to the player, secret places you didn't know about, as well as any hidden spots Steel Wool didn't want you to find. Make sure to watch until the very end to see my favorite secret and security breach, and with all that being said, let's hop right into it. Our first location takes us to Monty's Gator Golf. First, head towards this level 10 security door, and do a simple Freddy D load to walk through the wall. Once you've loaded, You'll see that we're in a small room. Head down the stairs and line yourself up with this door here. Move along with Freddy on this very specific path. You want to move back around eight and a half steps, then around three steps to the right. Next, move another six and a half steps backwards or until you see the map unload. Then, take six steps left. Now just four steps back. Two steps to the right, and turn around. You should see Monty's Gator Golf loaded in, along with this room here. Now all you have to do is head through this wall, and deload until you would end up in this room. Wait for the map to spawn back in, and you are free to walk around. Interestingly, this sign here shows a reversed lobby directional arrow over top of a security office symbol. Well, the only place you can go from here is through this door at the end of the hallway, so just do one last deload and you should be passed. After that, you will notice you end up right next to the security office. This secret area seems to be a scrapped passageway in order to travel to Monty's Golf directly from the atrium. I think this area would have been really cool to see, and it's really unfortunate that it had to be scrapped. Up next, we are headed to Roxy Raceway. More specifically, this back area, near the door to Afton. First, you want to find this bag here, near the robot head, and jump on top of it. From there, you'll want to jump to these crates, then to this pylon, back to the crates, and then on top of this railing, which gives you access to this upper area. Up here, there isn't much to see other than construction equipment and some cement, but it does make for a fun little area to explore. Something else you can do up here is jump to this railing and run up it, following it carefully. Then jump over here to get to this upper area. This upper area is very interesting as it has fully modeled bathrooms that you would never normally be able to access. It's fully equipped with stalls, sinks, posters, and even little wet floor sign bots. They even have small details like drains, decals, and garbage bins. This door here is interesting, as when you look at it from this side, you can see out. But if you go outside and look through, it's just a wall. There are also these really cool bleachers that are fully modeled and have collision, though they're easily seen from the areas below. Another thing that's up here are these really cool decorative pieces, like this Roxy statue. this much larger Roxy statue, There are also these neat little buggies attached to these metal posts. And at the end over here there are some vending machines. If you ever want to leave this upper area, you can easily just jump down from over here. Also, I should mention, I did take Freddy up the stairs to try and see what was past this weird tire door, but when I unloaded using Freddy and walked through, I just fell out of the world and ended up back at my last save point, so there was really nothing to see past there. Other things I found on top of Roxy Raceway were a few game mechanic objects, such as this distraction car ride. 
There are also several Freddy flashlight recharge stations up here. There is one on the west side here, one in the middle, and one on the east side over here, on the other side of the bleachers. There are three separate flashlight recharge stations up here, normally inaccessible to the player. Why is this? I have a theory. I believe that early in the development phase of Roxy Raceway, Steel Wool had intended for this area to be accessible to the player, or even a necessary location to go in the story. I think this is so because of how detailed everything is up here, even though you normally can't ever be up here. The bathrooms are fully modeled and very detailed, as well as all of the mechanic objects that are up here, like the car ride and all the recharge stations. Our next hidden location is also at Roxy Raceway. Go to the west side and go through this door towards Afton. Go down the stairs, past all the gates, but instead of turning left towards the elevator, turn right. You'll see this little fenced area tucked away. Going through here by simply deloading, you'll end up on the other side of the fence. Going through here by simply deloading, you'll end up on the other side of the fence. Once the map has fully loaded back in, you'll notice all the construction equipment around. These things are normally seen when looking through the fence, but the interesting bits end up when we go deeper. As we travel deeper, you'll notice that the object count gets a lot more scarce and spread out, most likely because you can't normally be in here, so you don't need to see this far deep. Once you get about this deep, you'll notice that there's practically nothing for objects around here. There's a few support pillars and rocks and things like that, but that's about it. Once we get to the end here, you'll notice that there's a door, and surrounding the door there appears to be this weird field that changes the camera's lighting and colors. Here you can see it clearly. If you decide to Freddy deload through this room, you'll notice that on the other side of the door is a staircase. By going around the stairs, you'll find a familiar vent. This vent takes you to the Roxy boss fight room, and I think it's really cool that these Two areas are connected just by this one door and this small underground area. For our last Roxy Raceway secret, once you reach this upper area, you can actually go across the bleachers here and jump into these barriers and cross over the top of them. Then, once you're on the other side, you can kind of run across and follow them and then drop down onto the racetrack. Which is very interesting, and it's just a nice area to explore around. If you turn around immediately, you can see this mess of construction material. And if you look over the edge over here, you can actually see where the Roxy boss fight starts. Heading back up the track, you hit an invisible trigger around here that activates the Roxy death cutscene. Once the cutscene ends, the game puts you back on track where you activated it. Now that we are on the higher parts of the track, you can see it gives you a very nice view of the Roxy Raceway sign. Continuing along the track, you can see these three random Rockstar themed porta potties. They can't be interacted with in any way, but they're just cool decorative pieces. Once you make the final turn, it's about the end. Our next secret area is a smaller one. First, head to the Superstar Arcade and head to the back area where you find Music Man. Do a quick Freddy D load and just walk in. There isn't all that much to see around here, and it's just a small corridor. There is, however, this Melon Felons arcade machine that we can get a closer look at. There are also two other doors in this corridor. The door that leads to the left, towards the office, and the door at the end that doesn't open. Once we Freddy D load through this door, you'll actually see that it's just the door on the other side of this wall. It must just be an aesthetic choice. Another area to be explored is this connection tunnel that you can see Roxy in, in the initial chase scene of the game. Just like the others, we can start by Freddy deloading into this area, and interestingly enough, while you walk through this hallway, it actually deloads each side of the map depending where you stand. Sometimes you can actually have both sides unload at the same time. This side over here seems to be Chica's kitchen area, while this other side over here seems to be the intro chase area. This next area is actually only a few steps away from the previous area. Head towards where Chica initially jumps out at you in the intro chase scene, 
and by simply jumping over these boxes, you can run down to the end and see this big service door. However, it is locked by a level 12 security pass. Side note, this is the only level 12 security pass door that's in the game. Oddly enough, when I called Freddy towards the door, it made the open sound but didn't actually open. When I tried to exit Freddy to get through it, it didn't actually work. So I had to go all the way back and reset Freddy. Once I did it, it didn't want to open. So this time I opted into Freddy deloading through the door. Though it appears there's nothing on the other side. So I just fell into the void. Our next secret area is actually a really interesting one. Start off by going to Rockstar Row and go down the utility tunnels. Walk past this mopping staff bot and into this room. This is the room where you see a golden gift behind this pillar in front of you and a divot in the wall on the left with nothing to the right. Although, if you have a keen eye enough, you'll notice that there actually is something on the right. This piece of wall here is actually sticking out by just a bit. And if we take the time to Freddy deload just past this wall piece, you'll see an entirely new hallway completely inaccessible to the player normally. Following it down, you'll see a set of stairs leading to the endless void. There's currently nothing past the void, Though, it makes you wonder, what was this area initially used for? Maybe we'll learn in the upcoming Ruined DLC. Our next area I wanted to further explore was this staff bot cult circle thing at the beginning of the game. By Freddy deloading past this fence, we are able to get a much better look at these staff bots up close. As we can see, it appears that they're standing just idle, all facing the destroyed staff bot in the center. Going past them, towards the end of the corridor, there is a large service door that opens up for us upon approach. However, this door is just another void. Heading back, we can see this mess of cords and cables above us. However, other than that, there isn't much else to see in this area. Our final, and my personal favorite, secret and security breach takes us to the Phaser Blast entrance. Head right, like we did at Monty Gulf, and Freddy deload through this wall. Once passed and loaded back in, you can see that we've entered a largely completed room with some stairs to our left. Going down the stairs, you'll be met with some weird Freddy umbrella things, but more importantly a door. By doing another very specific sequence of movements, we can walk across this invisible floor, much like Monty Gator Gulf, and make our way closer to Phaser Blast. However, when we let the map load in this time, you'll see that we are actually not headed towards Phaser Blast, but rather Roxy Raceway. And yes, this is another secret involving Roxy Raceway. Once we make it to the end, you'll actually see that it leads towards this concession stand-like place within Roxy Raceway. One last Freddy deload of the video, and we're through the door, seeing the whole of Roxy Raceway. That's going to wrap up everything for this video. Thank you all so much for watching to the end, and if you enjoyed or learned something new, feel free to leave a like. Also, if you feel like it, leave a comment counting the amount of times I said deload in this video. Cause I'm sure it's a lot. Well, that's me signing off for now, and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya!